Good afternoon, everyone. My topic of today's discussion is modern developments and current trends in forensic document examination. Now, here the agenda of the discussion is very clear that we'll be talking about the developmental agenda. Whenever we say that we are talking about trends, we need to understand and appreciate that trends is always a contextual terminology that you have a backdrop from where this trend emerged and then there is a you know futuristic aspect where this trend is taking to so we'll uh, the we'll also look about the historic aspects of document examination as to how the development of writing happened and how the development of documents happened and in follow through what are the various stages of development that took place and how this development has led to expansion of the discipline as such and we have moved from a hard copy era to a digital era where we will find a lot of uh, digital documents the bulk of the hard copies will reduce uh, henceforth though we cannot eliminate it completely out of life at present and we still deal with a lot of hard copy documents uh, in all walks of our life but yes we are heading towards the digital era in a very smart fashion and that is where the goal of the country, goal of our leadership also lies of a digital India. And thus, this digital India transformation brings about a lot of host of challenges in terms of, uh, uh, you know, the variety of documents that we are going to encounter now and the variety of challenges that would now emerge and which, you know, creates a symphony with the theme of the conference that emerging trends. So we'll have to see what are the newer trends that are emerging in the field of question document examination? We have seen those old days in the country where the letters were taken by pigeons from one place to another. That was the mode of communication. And today a seamless, you know, connectivity can send your documents miles away into any part of the globe uh, on a just a click away. So the ease has uh, certainly increased many folds and that brings, you know, a newer perspective the document examiners need to prepare themselves for this newer kind of challenges that might, you know, come through all this uh, developments as a byproduct. Uh, friends, as I told, the trend is always, you know, emerges, originates from a background, and there is always a backdrop to it. And the backdrop is how the writing developed, how the document developed as such. And as we all know that, you know, communication is an essential part of our life. Without communicating, we may not even survive. So in the primitive era, when the people would have wanted to communicate, they initially, the first development would have been the oral language. And the oral language was the first medium of communication or the expressions were the first medium of communications. But those were possible only when the other person is in near vicinity or is in physical nearness, right? But what about communicating with those people who are at a distance, who are not visible to us? So in the due course of development, people would have thought of communicating with symbols, signs, and sending it across. So uh, the people devise means of communicating through visible signs that could be understood by others. And many signs and symbols grew out of early stages of the development of writing. So these signs and symbols were part of the developmental uh, history of the writing. And initially, the, these writings could be found in the caves, in the forms of tablets. And, uh, you know, these signs and symbols slowly and steadily got converted into uh, alphabets, initially into symbols, symbols into syllables, syllables into phonographs, and phonographs into phonetic alphabets. Uh, uh, reading the history, uh, we are made aware that the Sumerians are, you know, given the credit of developing the first alphabets. Now, the Sumerians are, you know, the ancient most civilization in the southern Mesopotamia. Uh, and these people, their ancient history, their recoveries, old records, they show a lot of alphabets and writings on different parts of, you know, their cultural heritage, their potteries, their caves, their tablets, and all these kind of things can be found out if you go through the history. While these writings were met with the hard object on softer objects, you know, uh, as part of inscription, slowly and steadily, uh, the development of ink also happened somewhere 4,500 years ago in China. And after the development of ink, the development of paper happened. That also in China and some few people, uh, you know, they say in Egypt, some uh, 2,000 years ago, it also happened. 
and the initial papers were part of cloths. Now this cloths, uh, the pulping process improved in the due course of time and uh, the pulping process improvement led to the formation of the real wood pulp papers that we are using today. The improvement is still happening. Improvement is happening in terms of fillers, in terms of whiteness, in terms of the pulp material, the raw material. And this constant innovation has led to, you know, has shaped the modern era documents today with the modern inks and modern pages, papers. This has happened. Friends, people say that the crime is as old as the human civilization, which makes me to say that the fraud and forgeries of documents are also as old as the existence of documents, maybe. So both are, you know, both have traveled together. And the way the frauds are happening, it, necess it necessitates the need of uh, document experts, document examiners right from the beginning, who are supposed to do the collection of evidence, examine the documents to determine the authenticity, identify the authorship or who has made the document, and also after examination, submit the report and provide the courtroom testimony to wherever required. The same evolutionary trend which I'm talking about, the you know, documents, the pages, the inks, it also applies to the organization. If you talk in the Indian context, India is the proud, you know, forensic land in the world where the first fully dedicated handwriting laboratory came up. In 1904, when the government examiner of question documents, GQD Lab Shimla, was established. This was the first in the entire world where a fully dedicated handwriting lab was made. And uh, you know in the annals of history that the Britishers, when they were ruling the country, uh, Mr. C. R. Hardless was appointed as the first document expert in 1904, followed by you know Mr. Brevester, Mr. Stott, Mr. Hodgson, and so on, till India attained independence and Mr. Sen and Mr. Bilal took over from there for developing this organization. In India, the development of the organizations remained limited to development of labs. As such, we never had a policy making body, standard defining body in the country as far as question document is concerned. Though in after, after establishment of Directorate of Forensic Science in 2002, the administrative control of the uh, GQDs, the Government Examiner of Question Document Officers, were given to the Directorate of Forensic Science. But it was mostly administrative. The manuals, of course, were released. But the dynamic setting of standards the, in appreciation of the developments taking place in the field could not take place at the same pace which happened in other countries, particularly in the United States. And thus, the development of organizations, uh, we can always refer to uh, the development that has taken place outside India. And it also, you know, got that foundation of uh, the authorship of the book, uh, which happened by Mr. Albert S. Osborne, uh, the question documents back in 1910. That made the foundation uh, for the world to think that such a discipline exists in criminal identification and people need to sit together form such scientific groups which leads to work for the advancement of this particular discipline the american society of question document examiner was formed in 1942 with albert osborne and few early question document examiners coming together and they contributed immensely in properly training and qualifying the forensic document examiners in their region after American Society of Question Document Examiners, American Academy of Forensic Science scheme, and it was founded in 1948. The American Academy of Forensic Sciences had 11 sections within it, and question document examination was one of those sections, which was there in AAFS. Then came the American Board of Forensic Document Examiners, which was uh, instituted in Columbia in 1977. Now, from American Academy of Forensic Science, this body of forensic document examiners, the board of forensic document examiners, took over the most of the roles. And now this forensic document examiners, they started qualifying people, certifying people for the purpose of becoming certified forensic question document examiners. They also started setting standards for the field of practice. This continued. And then came the Scientific Working Group for Forensic Document Examiners, SWG, DOC. And this group 
kept on, uh, you know, setting standards for forensic document examination uh, since then. Till 2012, they kept on, uh, you know, the affairs were mostly internal. Uh, people published whatever they found within their organizations. And from after 2012, they started publishing this uh, scientific working group, SWG, DOC. They started publishing the standards on their website. So it was now universally available. The countries where the document examination development lacked uh, due to, you know, absence of such bodies, they could also refer to such standards and based on their homeland policies as to how their country responds to policy formulation, they adopted this kind of standards in different eras, in different pace. In 2014, the National Institute of Standards and Technology came, NIST, and this NIST took over the role of the scientific working group. Now, NIST is uh, not a scientific body as such. NIST falls in Ministry of Commerce of United States, and its basic mandate is to set standards for all materials, whichever is a, you know considered as a commercial service in their country. So the forensic science services is also included in that, and it sets standards for all uh, you know forensic domains, be it uh, forensic document examination, be it DNA. So NIST is a popular body where you can always uh, you know refer to for getting good references in forensic science. Then came OSAC, OSAC, the organization, organization of Scientific Area Committees. Now, this Organization of Scientific Area Committees, this was formed after NIST, and it has now subsumed the role of uh, uh, setting standards for question document examinations. Again, like, you know, uh, the American Academy of Forensic Sciences, it has also got 11 subsections, and one of the section is... Uh, forensic question document examination. So we can see as to how the organizations have evolved, what is the trend there uh, in some countries and what has been the trend in our country. When coming back to our country's trend in case of organizational development, it is pertinent to mention that we were the, you know, we had government examiner of question documents which served our country for more than 100 years from 1904 onwards. But in 2010, we all would recall that uh, on the recommendations of our Damodaran Mishra committee, the Ministry of Home Affairs accepted the recommendations and the stained alone uh, laboratories of question document, the uh, GEQDs of Shimla, Hyderabad and Kolkata, they were merged into the respective jurisdictional CFSLs, Central Forensic Science Laboratories of Hyderabad, Kolkata and Chandigarh. And in 2006, August, most probably, 6 August 2010, this merger happened. So from there onwards, all the document organizations of the country are working either with the central forensic laboratories, state forensic laboratories, or with the police departments, criminal investigation department of state police organizations. So that has all been the organizational development of document has taken place. In uh, document examination, we deal with several issues and most of the people who are from the field, field uh, would recognize that we do uh, offer opinions and we conduct examinations on uh, several issues related to whether the document is genuine or forged, uh, who has written the document, whether uh, who has signed the document, uh, is the handwriting uh, or signature disguised or it is genuine. Uh, whether there's an alteration in the document as such, whether there's an obliteration, whether there is an um, erasure, whether there's an addition, whether there is a substitution, uh, what is the origin of the typescript, what are the typewriters, stamp and seal impressions, whether they're genuine or they have been falsified. Uh, then came, you know, as the development went ahead, uh, we came to uh, get into, you know, examining the secret messages and uh, then... Uh, uh, sequence of strokes, which of the two writings were made first, uh, the intersecting lines examination. We also face the challenge of age determination of documents and writings. We also got to examine the watermarks of the um, uh, uh, secret uh, documents, important documents. We also had to examine the wire marks, uh, indented writings, uh, and uh, indented writings also saw a lot of phases of development we saw secret documents, uh, you know, examination, then Xerox copy, scanned copy, fax copy, and the latest of the series of the challenges is the manipulation in the electronic documents. Now, when I say that there is a manipulation in electronic documents, we'll have to understand that there is an overlap of mandate here. 
overlap of the mandate in the sense uh, that uh, uh, now we have two important divisions working in the forensic laboratories. One is the question document division and one is the forensic electronics department or the cyber forensics department. Now, when we say it is an electronic documents, uh, the mandate uh, here gets slightly overlapped and both the departments comes into picture. But traditionally in Indian context, the electronic documents are all examined by cyber, cyber documents, be it image analysis, be it text analysis, be it audio file analysis, be it video file analysis. We saw the presentation of multimedia forensics. We saw um, Mr. Faninder speaking about the digital forensics law. So this kind of documents are here mandatorily being examined by the cyber forensic experts and it is not still considered as a domain of question document examiners. The question document examiners in the country still focuses on the hard copy documents which are received in the laboratory for various kind of analysis. Thus, the line is very thin between the two documents. And trust me, with the development of technology, the infusion of more tech things into uh, documenting and preparing record, this line is getting thinner and thinner by every day. <coughs> if we uh, look at the trends of development of technologies, you know, initially we used hand magnifiers as the most primary and fundamental tool by all document examiners. Um, black and white roll camera, the linen tester, the measurement tools for measurement of baseline, measurement of angle, measurement of slant, and all those kind of things we did in the initial days. But the technology kept on growing. And based on these tools, we kept on examining the handwriting forgeries, signature forgeries, simulation, traced carbon forgeries, all these things we kept on examining. But as uh, the technology was bound to grow, uh, there were a lot of new technologies added. So initially when we uh, harped on the potentials of some of the destructive technologies as well, but as the time grew, we realized that the destruction, uh, destructive technologies, the evidence is lost. So to prevent that loss of evidence for even subsequent analysis or for any other purpose of preservation, we shifted from destructive techniques to non-destructive techniques. And when I say destructive technology, the easiest example could be, you know, thin layer chromatography of ink. TLC was performed for ink analysis. And now we see that the light sources are employed for differentiating the various inks uh, as such. Then when we see that the ESDA was used electrostatic detection apparatus that was used for the purpose of detection of indentation. When I say modern trend, it doesn't mean that these instruments are obsolete. Those technologies are still being used. These are still part of our you know, day to day functioning of the labs as they still widely used. But now again, you know, with the development of video spectral comparator and other light sources with the angle lighting, oblique lighting, we are now able to develop the same indentation in a much easier way and much clumsy free way rather than what we used to do uh, in uh, uh, olden days when we had ESDA, we had a lot of processes, we had humidifying chambers, we had those charge development process, the toner pro processing and all those things. So somewhere the life, uh, the technology has also provided a lot of cutting edge, you know, um, advantage to the forensic document examiners as well. Uh, the traditional approach had a lot of limitations. It was time consuming, it was labor intensive. Sometimes due to absence of technology in certain cases, we could not render opinion to the court. So there was uh, occasional inconclusiveness as well. And uh, you know, some minute details could have been overlooked because of we just relied on our eyes. And the technologies sometimes are, you know, much greater aid to our eyes. So without those aid, sometimes we tend to miss some minute or inconspicuous uh, details. So those human errors also have been, you know, minimized to a great extent by uh, this incoming technologies into the field. So as I uh, talk to you, you know, the handwriting examination it is still there. It was the most traditional way. Signature analysis still there. Typescript examination has reduced to a lot. Mostly now the uh, court of laws, the, the honorable courts, they work with typewriters. Otherwise, typewriters are mostly eliminated from most other offices. Then uh, we examined simple photocopies in the past. But from there, examination and analysis of computer printouts, scanned documents, counterfeited security documents, tampering and manipulations, then uh, digital photocopiers. So the new kinds of documents have started coming in. 
as i told you the video spectral comparator has also grown over the time the trend you will have to see the vsc14 2000 then vsc5000 then vsc6000 and now vsc8000 so see how the technology has grown the vsc is nothing but a collection you know assemblage of various light sources now this assemblage of light sources is so wide range of facility which is you know kind of one point solution to many document problems though there are certain segment of documents which still needs manual examination but rest many of the problems like you know uh, sequence of strokes ink variations security features indented writings deleted text obscured writings is all can be uh, very easily and very comfortably now examined with the help of video spectral comparators and uh, with every new segment of vsc uh, this, uh, the facilities the amount of work that you can do the range of activities that you can perform has grown tremendously the vsc 5000 was you know now looks like a primitive segment with vsc 6000 offering a lot of other solutions and 8000 still with the added you know uh, features of stitching the documents for example so there are a lot of other things that have come into uh, picture the, then comes docu center nervis if you see the docu center nervis also has grown over a period of time we started somewhere with docu stat then came inspec then inspec uh, in, inspect various uh, uh, models of inspec and finally the you know docu center nervis now docu center nervis and video spectral comparator are more or less you know they perform similar kind of functions and when they are attached to various databases of security documents they become a really powerful tool uh this uh, uh, docu center nervis or uh, uh, video spectral comparator they can be used for you know uh, uh, checking not only our documents uh, national documents but with the database of you know like currencies passports uh, uh, other security documents it becomes very easy to you know even uh, check the documents of foreign immigrants immigrants everywhere uh, everywhere so this uh, docu center and uh, 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 video spectral comparators have really provided great boosts to the document labs i had included few cases of you know uh, swiss uh, passport forgeries unfortunately i am not able to show you but there are a lot of features into our security documents you have to uh, realize that there are number of ultraviolet uh, light uh, you know features uh, related features uh, which safeguards your passports for that matter so people often tend to you know uh, take up the original take out the original picture and affix their picture on the passports and do some kind of uh, letter manipulations you know to avail the facilities that a passport can give to a person but uh, a careful examination by an expert uh, eye of document examiner can reveal that uh, the document has been tampered with and uh, what are the areas where the manipulations have happened and the person can be you know apprehended to the court of law and the law enforcement agency Agencies for a future, you know, course of action. So those kind of uh, documents, uh, I wanted to show you. Unfortunately, I'm very sorry. Uh, I'm not able to. Uh, otherwise, there were some beautiful fe features that I wanted to show you how the manipulations have happened. And uh, uh, remember, there are number of micro printings. There are number of miniature writings. There are number of you know wire marks. Number of uh, optical variable inks which are being used into all the security um, documents if you see your own currency of the country you will see some security features uh, 17 to 18 features have been shown in our 2000 currency you know, and all those covert <coughs> covert features are there so if you done you also have ovi you also have micro printing you also have you know watermarks wire marks all those things are there embedded in your uh, security documents of the country in the your passport as well you have number of security features which needs to be you know understood and studied <coughs> the sequence of stroke uh, you know also is a very emerging area uh, not uh, the problem is not new but the solutions are still to be found in the days when we used fountain ink pen it was easily detected because of the drag of the ink because of the you know feathering process because of the continuity of the gloss and many other things but now with you know more uh, printed documents coming up it is really really difficult uh, uh, to predict the continuity of strokes or the sequence of strokes as to which letter was written first and subsequently what has been written so the problem is still there there are number of people who are trying to find out solutions based on microscopic method based on video spectral comparator methods 
uh, I guess I have also published a couple of papers on this uh, area. Uh, few scientists in the world are working on atomic force microscopy. Um, so there are few very good works are going on. But uh, for young researchers and the people who are working in this area, uh, this remains a you know problem to be solved. We are still not able to you know give a very conclusive opinion in all cases, especially where you know uh, the black ink is uh, superimposed by another black ink. So it becomes very difficult. Uh, uh, I had received a case long back where uh, you know a, a black signature was present over a black typewritten documents. And the signature had crossed the typewritten, uh, you know, line, the place given for signature, the signature had crossed. So it was really a very challenging case and very difficult uh, work to do when the ink colors are same, you know. Then comes uh, uh, <coughs> the infusion of the use of stereo microscopy. The stereo microscopy is also used uh, like biggest as an instrument which is very useful. The stereo microscopy is also a very useful tool. Uh, one of my friend uh, and my colleague, he would be here somewhere, I guess. Uh, Dr. Ritesh Shukla is writing a book of applications of stereo, uh, application of microscopy in forensics. And I'm happy that I've contributed a chapter on stereo microscopy examination in that book. So uh, the stereo microscopy also adds immense value to the examination of you know sequence of strokes the micro printed text so enlargement as well as you know getting a 3d image the stereo uh, microscope is a very very useful tool similarly ir microscopy if you talk so ir microscopy helps a lot uh, uh, nowadays is being you know widely employed especially in case of uh, differentiation of inks uh, in examination of charred documents uh, obscured writing revealing obscured writings and uh, many other applications, this IR microscopy. So now the document labs are also having the IR microscopes. Then there is a handled you know, uh, uh, instrument which is known as proscope. Now proscope is uh, a you know, portable microscope kind of thing where you can examine the, doctor, the portable stereo microscope where you can examine the document. The proscope is also attached uh, with a screen where you can see the documents in a very enlarged way. And if you see from proscope to moving to standalone microscope, now the standalone microscopes are also very useful tool. The proscope had a, a screen attached to, you know, a separate screen attached to it. So you had a computer screen along with your instrument. So portability was slightly lesser. Now the standalones are still more portable. So where the screen is small, you know, six, six inch, eight inch screen is, you know, fitted to the uh, stereo microscope at the place of eyepiece. And so you can directly see whatever is visible to eyepiece. It will be directly coming onto those screens and you can examine the area of your interest and find out what are the, you know, different kind of uh, fraudulent uh, acts that has taken place into that document. Then you also have now head, ma head mount magnifier. Uh, remember the kind of pain that our document uh, experts used to take with uh, one magnifier in one hand, the document in the other, and you know, with uh, a very uh, slanted neck position, they used to examine the documents for hours and hours, and uh, they suffered a lot on the health ground. But now with, you know, this kind of tools which are coming uh, to our rescue, uh, this mounted head mount. So now you have a light source attached to a, uh, you know, like a headgear, you'll, uh, Gear it, and you have lights and lenses of various resolutions. A portable box will be with you, where you will have different magnifying lenses, power, uh, different power of magnifications. You can change the lens, and you can examine the document. It also has got a LED light source, which help you to illuminate the content of the document for examination purpose. Then a lot of other advanced instruments which were thought once thought to be, you know, part and parcel of only physics and chemistry laboratories. They are also now being employed for the examination of papers and inks, like scanning electron microscope for surface examinations, for uh, EDXRF, energy dispersive X-ray fluorescence, for elemental analysis of inks. Then you have FTIR for, you know, the, studying the functional groups and various other chemical compositions of papers and inks. Uh, so this kind of developments has taken place. A lot of instrumental development has taken place. And the new technologies that I've just discussed, IR microscopy, the proscope, the head mounts, the video spectral comparator, the newer versions, of course, the later. These are the latest trends in the field. These are the latest instruments which are available in most of the advanced laboratories and academic institutions. 
then coming to mechanical and electronic impressions if you see how we examined historically the mechanical impressions the first mechanical impression could have been you know a pencil or a pencil like hard object sharp object you know which created some impression on some soft surface ideally speaking from document paper document pencil pen where the initial uh, you know mechanical impressions coming moving forward we saw type scripts typography typewriters we saw stamp impressions we saw photocopies we saw facsimile facsimile machines then we saw computer printouts and the latest trend when you say the emerging trend the emerging trend is of course the computer printouts the digital photocopier the scanned documents and the various kind of manipulations that is being made into all this kind of digital documents these are the latest trends so whenever a hard copy comes to a document examination we should always see it with in you know with some some degree of suspicion as to you know we just have got a print out it might be possible then in the backdrop in the original document some kind of editing some kind of manipulation should have happened and whatever we have received itself you know is not the most authentic document in our hand so that kind of suspicion is important and that suspicion would only come to you that confidence uh, you know also along with suspicion would only come to you when you are aware of the latest things that are happening in the uh, digital uh, world also so the document experts i'm very happy to see that most of the document experts now uh, these days especially the younger ones they have started also working on image processing and um, you know watermarking digital watermarking and what not so these people are now you know better equipped to examine even the hard copy documents because they know what are the features that a digital manipulation would leave what are the imprints and footprints of this digital manipulation would be there on this hard copy documents <clears throat> now aging of document is uh, also an important thing with more digitalization you know the aging of document the problem has been resolved as in computer most of the document the properties are there and uh, even the um, uh, if it is you know being manipulated the properties are being changed that also can be found out so digital documents as far as aging is concerned you can get the uh, uh, absolute age without much fuss but when it comes to hard copy documents the problem is persistent and is not you know uh, failing to wean ready to wean uh, we have been struggling with this problem and it is uh, well established fact now that we would never be able to you know tell that uh, what is the absolute age of the document but certainly relative aging has always been done see study the popular case of the you know uh, the uh, prime minister of uh, one of the south asian countries was arrested because of you know in the panama uh, paper leaks Uh, they prepared and submitted a document with a font computer font which was not there in 2006 or 2008 they prepared a document bad dated document of 2006 and later he was they were caught why because uh, uh, that font itself was made in 2008 or 2012 so a font which never existed what used on a bad dated document it was easy to apprehend but see that kind of common sense should work while examination you know the when the kind of paper came when this kind of ink came when this kind of uh, font came but the real challenge is whether do we have a database of when these things were launched probably in india not except you know the computerized things or the microsoft things uh, features we do not have a database of when was you know uh, everything launched so that remains a problem and we always do relative aging of documents the initial process that we uh, started was you know comparing the documents from the documents of the similar time frame of different time frame and finding out the similar properties then we also you know did lot of other things mr mohinder singh has uh, the former gqd mohinder singh sir has recently delivered a very good lecture on you know uh, the past and present of uh, dating of documents and he has done some very extensive work so dating technologies the carbon dating technologies and many other technologies kept on taking place we examined the documents for number of impressions indentations kind of ink that were used kind of raw material and pulp that were present in the paper and now we have moved to an era where yeah, <coughs> the dating has also started being done from yellow dots now yellow dot when they were launched i'm sure the young researchers would be interested to know the yellow dot theory it created waves in a number of sense that the printer could be identified and mic of the printer the machine identification code of the printer could be deciphered now there are number of research groups in various countries who are working on this on research gate i could find one mr p gentleman mr peter buck he is doing lot of works and now this 
uh, <coughs> changes in this dots, this yellow dot theories, these are also being considered as a potential tool which can establish in coming days the age of document. So that also is a very you know good area to work upon. Uh, my own research team has started working on yellow dots. I do not know uh, how much we have progressed, but we have recently started working on yellow dots uh, for uh, you know exploring number of objectives. So these are the re uh, recent advancements, the recent trends that are happening and. Uh, uh, we should, as a young researcher or a, you know, as a seasoned researcher, we should all always engage, you know, appreciate this kind of developments and engage into such kind of activities. A lot of uh, digital enhancements are also taking place in document. Uh, and uh, when we say the image enhancement and digital enhancement, uh, it always remains a matter of debate whether the court of law would accept it or not, because digital enhancement is a kind of digital manipulation. And you know, with manipulation, a lot of things, a lot of features uh, of the data changes. And so the defense counsel always takes a plea that the document has been manipulated. So as an examiner, we need to now, you know, look for uh, uh, solutions where we can convince that uh, some examination process might entail, might include, uh, involve some kind of enhancements. And that's where the court should be, you know, trained. Uh, the people from judiciary and law enforcement should also be trained that they are able to appreciate. Enhancement always doesn't mean, you know, uh, fraudulent enhancement. It sometimes can be a positive enhancement where you are able to reveal something which was not visible. But the science should be, of course, you know, tested, trusted, and peer-reviewed methods should be used so that there is no claim of, you know, doing any kind of damage to the entire judicial process. <coughs> Then one of the newer areas of uh, the document examination is the optical character recognition, OCR. Now this optical character uh, optical character is nothing. It's a tool which uh, you know converts the uh, scanned text or a hard copy text into a digital format so that it can be edited. So in future uh, we should uh, you know always uh, uh, expect that such cases might also come where there would be some original document which is being converted into a digital format and then it has a, you know it is manipulated edited and uh, with the help of this ocr and uh, later it is reproduced for examination so those kind of uh, challenges also are futuristic and might come to our labs where uh, you will uh, there are a number of softwares for optical character recognition so you have adobe acrobat pro dc omni page ultimate abby fine reader reader rates Rosum. So all the now there are a number of softwares programs available. So as a document examiner, we should now also work in the area of OCR as to how this can be a deterrence to you know uh, law-abiding people and how it can be taken uh, fraudulent people how they can take advantage of this OCR method. And we as an examiner, how what should be our role? How would we be able to detect and prevent such kind of crimes in future? Then comes digital signature, which of course I'll not foray much into it because you know considering is to be a completely uh, uh, a domain of a doctor, digital forensic scientist. But uh, digital signatures are there to stay, and digital signatures are the tomorrow. Uh, you know, future of uh, is the future, absolute future, and uh, we should uh, the document expert should also be trained to. Uh, understand the concepts of digital signatures and how it can be you know examined and processed in our laboratory a lot of manipulations in doc e documents can happen and those also you know again a digital cyber experts forte but there is a lot of work uh, that can be done in this area like file format analysis um, um, uh, detection of changes in phone style size alignment and color metadata analysis hash value calculation the histogram variation whenever the data changes the histograms are built upon the data that histogram variations will happen there will be variation in compression rate every data has a fixed compression rate the moment the data changes the nature of data changes you know the compression rate would also change up from the original document to the new manipulated document then the change in color distribution the cymk value the error level analysis the error level analysis will give you a you know idea of how much data has been lost uh, during this compression or during uh, the manipulation in the um, file format. The secret writings that I was referring to, the secret writings, the trends you'll have to see. The initially, the secret writings were mostly, you know, invisible inks. You used, uh, you know, home-based uh, home liquids, kitchen-based liquids to produce this kind of 
secret writings, which could easily be deciphered by using heat or uh, ultraviolet light. <laughs> but as the, you know, the time passed by, uh, the miniature writings developed, the micro uh, writings developed, uh, followed by the cryptography. Now the, the cipher codes are being used to encrypt the documents. And this cyber uh, in, uh, encryption or watermarking of documents are very common now. So this kind of trainings and research areas should also be you know, um, uh, entered into by the field of document experts and they should learn the nuances of now cryptography. A lot of uh, cryptocurrencies are coming into picture. So those kind of crimes are also now being reported. Uh, then you also have stegography, the steg images where you, you have embedded uh, information into the background. And um, this embedded information can be, you know, uh, by destagging by the people who are expert into this, they can the stag images can be processed from uh, <coughs> when you when you embed some information, the image it is known as vessel image. After embedding the information, the hidden information it is known as stag image. So somebody should be able to you know uh, decipher the stag uh, the stag images uh, by processing it as to what information has been hidden into it. There's a lot of <coughs> sorry. There's a lot of other information also and intelligence people, the, um, the intelligence bureau and other intelligence agencies, they also use to cipher a lot of codified languages. The uh, languages are not written in proper wordings. They're alternative wordings, alternative, you know, phones, alternative text methods, alternative numerals are used for coding some kind of messages. So this kind of messages, they can also be revealed if you, you know, practice the art of this intelligence and um, code, uh, uh, reading the codes of the languages. So that also will help uh, in case of in, uh, in decoding such kind of uh, 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 coded languages. <coughs> now, another very new and challenging area, which is going to be futuristic, is 3D printing. Now, 3D printing object, uh, you know, it is a layer by layer printing of a 3D object by top 3D printers. But come to hear about any case, but let me tell you, this is the one of the most, you know, futuristically very important areas for document examiners as to how 3D printing can be, you know, a threat in future and how it can be used by the criminal minds. So this will have to, you know, extrapolate now. We'll have to think of uh, in that direction as to how uh, the 3D printings and the objects which are 3D printed can be used to commit crimes and how uh, document experts can examine the 3D objects and can render opinion onto this. Social media surveillance. Now, social media surveillance is uh, often considered to be a uh, cyber expert's domain. Now, but social media expert is not all about activity log and you know the locations and other time logs, um, geo taggings. Not only about that. The social media monitoring or surveillance is also important from the uh, you know document expert's view. We are the people who are trained in examining the forensic stylistics and forensic linguistics. So we know certain people have certain way of writing certain things. So by examining an authorship character, you know, authorship, way of authorship or penmanship of a person and a uh, way of writing things on social media of certain persons, we can do such analysis where we can predict that certain questionable texts have been posted by uh, certain group of people or particular individual just by analyzing the forensic stylistics. So remember the social media surveillance, now you see whatever has happened in Delhi on 26 January, and followed by which number of uh, videos, number of uh, audio, the number of social media posts have surfaced. There would be, you know, a lot of people who would by 24 seven would be working on this kind of posts. Now the, the posts are very important as it has been created by individuals and with individuals, the stylistics come into picture where forensic document examiner can play a crucial role in identifying this kind of personal attributes or forensics uh, or stylistic, personal stylistics to, uh, car, you know, identify those kind of people. Uh, one of the uh, one of the very important, you know, and uh, very uh, fast developing area is uh, artificial intelligence based writing character uh, examination. Now, uh, while the handwriting examination and signature examination for ages have remained a you know manual examination process, the forensic document examiners they take up the hard copy, they examine it, and they render opinion based on that. Now, this is a tedious, cumbersome task. That's all right. 
and people at some uh, you know some part of the globe they started thinking on whether this entire process can be automated because see in other prins other domains of forensic science there's a lot of automation that has happened be it dna be it ballistics be it you know uh, chemical analysis so uh, few document examiners certainly would have come together to think on whether this science of document examination or handwriting examination whether it can be automated and yes of course few people have done some wonderful work of course the success rate of all these programs varies uh, you know between among themselves and uh, the level of confidence also has to be checked now, the acceptability of such kind of softwares in india as of today is almost nil uh, though uh, there are few researchers who are working with them i can recall uh, <clears throat> one of uh, a very senior document expert mr mc joshi gq de shimla uh, he was giving a presentation of uh, you know from cursive to cursor and uh, he discussed he was a man who personally visited the university of buffalo united states and came across the developers of the sadar fox now sadar fox is a, a program which is again based on artificial intelligence they worked on they work on pattern recognition method geometrical uh, analysis method and they come with uh, a kind of examination where by just by feeding certain data the data has to be fed manually by feeding those data the machine through its own intelligence will tell you whether the two signatures are matching or not so sadar uh, fox was one of the most uh, you know first uh, artificial intelligence based software and program which was developed by university of buffalo and sadar stands for uh, uh, center for excellence in document analysis document analysis and recognition that is sadar center for excellence in document analysis and recognition when sadar fox started getting success uh simultaneously in other parts in other laboratories leading lab laboratories also people worked on several artificial intelligence based softwares and some of them were the, you know fish fish was developed by nest national institute of standard technology the fish stands for uh, forensic uh, information system on handwriting fish is forensic information system on handwriting and now when fish was developed the versions of fish also came now the nest laboratory has developed a wanda wanda is said to be the advanced fish now so wanda is a new software which works on you know automatic pattern recognition then you had uh, flash id now flash id was uh, developed by uh, perhaps uh, um, skeometry uh, skeometry lab and the skeometry lab developed this forensic language independent analysis thing now see this flash id is language independent that means the only thing that you need to do the english hindi or you know arabic urdu this are not problem there you just have to feed this uh, 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 data into the system the system should recognize it and later on whenever you want to uh, uh, evaluate or analyze the things you feed new data it will compare it with existing data and give you a result whether there is a match or there is a no match so there are feature uh, there is a complex algorithmic set where there are feature extraction modules comparing comparing modules and finally a decision making module which gives you a final result as to what is uh, you know so this i consider to be a you know revolutionary development if it happens i see the world of document examination changing very fast if this ai based technology succeeds and of course it is just a matter of time you know when the system becomes so intelligent the system becomes so fine tuned that it recognizes the uh, question documents with same level of accuracy or maybe even enhanced level of accuracy than what we offer manually and uh, that will you know again what i said will change the world of document examination so as a whole uh, let me conclude my uh, you know entire uh, talk today uh, the only thing that i wanted to tell you is that upgradation upskilling is the only way ahead we as document examiners who started our profession based on hard copies have uh, you know are now have no options but to learn the newer dimensions of technological developments the newer emerging areas of question document examination and based on that we will be able to cater and serve the purpose of judicial you know delivery system a far in a far better way so please keep upgrading please keep learning the newer things and keep referring to the new upgradations and emerging trends uh, thank you dr anjit uh, i'm open to questions but i would ideally prefer if you can just uh, you know have my email id and send it to me because uh, i've been uh, discussing the entire thing through my mobile 
and I do not have an much access to you know chat the things. So my email ID is there with the organizers, but uh, I am still sharing it. It is Sumit S U M I T dot Chaudhary C H O U D H A R Y at the rate R R U dot A C dot in. In case I miss it, uh, I would request Kritika or Ranjit sir to kindly you know provide it to the uh, uh, participants so that I can you know take the questions. I will be very happy to reply each and uh, all of them through email. Uh, thank you so much for being a patient listener. Thank you, Dr. Ranjit. I'm absolutely privileged and honored to be part of this August gathering. And thank you for bearing with me, you know, without any much technological support today, though I was talking about technology all through. But sometimes, you know, even technology can play a spoiled sport. So sorry for all the inconveniences that I caused, but I'm uh, very hopeful that I would have been ab uh, able to add some value to, you know, the wonderful scholarly orations that were happening from, for the last two days. Thank you so much. Jai Hind.